Hi everybody, welcome to Prenatal Yoga with Selena. So before we get started, making sure that you have any props that you need on hand, such as a block or a bolster, and that could simply be a container or a book uh, like this, or a rolled up blanket or towel, even a pillow off of your bed. Okay, so just anything that we could use to fill space during the practice will be helpful at this point. All right, so we're gonna start standing. So come into a nice, comfortable position with your feet, and then you can bring hands to baby. Settle your shoulders down, away from your ears, and if you feel comfortable, close your eyes. Put a gentle sway into your hips, perhaps here. Maybe a gentle massage over baby. So at this stage, baby might be able to feel your touch, hear your voice, depending on where you are at in your pregnancy. And so just bonding, bonding with baby. Visualization is a very powerful tool that we use during birth to help cope, to help manage through the really hairy parts. And it can be used as a way to help us fuel, push on through a challenge. So I want you to use it now. I want you to visualize yourself holding baby. Notice where you are, what is the setting you're holding baby after baby is born. Mm. Using your sense of touch, notice how baby feels under your fingertips, in your arms, the weight of baby's body on your body. Using your sense of smell, nuzzling close into baby's head, smelling that sweet, sweet scent that only your baby has. Speaking to baby, what might you be saying? What words of soothing and comfort might you offer baby? Imagine how you're feeling right at this moment, after your birth, after this incredible challenge, when you finally get to hold your baby. Mm. Pretty euphoric. in through your center through stillness you can gently open your eyes adjusting to the light good so if your feet aren't already a little wider than your hips just navigate them out and then plie your toes out to the outer corners of your mat all right so we're going to do this parallel arm sweep towards the left and as you lift your arms up imagine opening up your rib cage and then pivot on your right toe so we don't get any of that round ligament pain that achiness deep down in the pelvis there so open and lift as you ex inhale exhale come right down through center and then inhale opposite side towards the right pivot on your left toe open rib cage good following back down and follow with your rate of breath so as you need to inhale, come up. As you need to exhale, come down. So everybody's at different stages practicing here. So I always like to say, don't follow me. Don't follow when I'm moving. You move with your rate of breath. So when you need to inhale, you should be raising your arms up. And at the end of your inhale, you're fully extended. And then when you need to exhale, you should be coming back down through center. And at the end of your exhale, you're down at center. Keep going. Following your rate, your rhythm will help encourage building that intuition within you, which is really helpful to have present during your birth. 
Good, one more towards the right, just balancing yourself out. So ending towards the right. Good, and then coming back through center. So feet are nice and wide still. Keep them there, keep them like that. Arms by your side. So as you inhale, sweep your arms up overhead. Exhale, bring it down the center line. Shoot your bum back for a squat flow. So we're just gonna come into half squat here with hands on the knees, fingers on the inside here. And then tuck your tail and round your spine. Now this is a rag doll to raise. Don't speed it up. Let your head hang, let your arms hang all the way up until you reach the top once again for the big inhale overhead, exhale, another half squat. Okay, so keep doing these half squats if this is feeling good for you. If you're feeling lightheaded, nauseous, or have indigestion, keeping your head up above your heart like this is helpful. Dropping your head can increase or exacerbate that. And if you're over 35 weeks and you know baby is breech, making sure that you are only doing half squat, not coming too deep, as you will don't want to encourage baby to descend at that stage. Otherwise, if you wanna try it, coming a little deeper, maybe all the way down to the floor, bringing your hands to meet your mat. Heels can be up or down, doesn't matter. Put the weight into your hands to rise first. These are rag dolls to stand. These are not fitness squats. So the rag doll is really helpful to help open up and elongate your spine, opening up, encouraging that movement and fluidity in between your vertebrae. So doing a few more cycles, pause if you need to pause at the top or bottom. Hmm, yeah. Nice soft knees as you rise up. Last one, and we'll meet back up at the top. Beauty. Yeah. All right, meeting up, taking your time. We're gonna bring our heels back in underneath our hips. So coming into that mountain pose. So mountain pose, really important to take note of your alignment here. Stacking your ears over your shoulders, your shoulders over your hips, your hips over your heels, and then all four corners of your feet equally rooted into the ground. Okay, so the tendency in the third trimester as belly becomes more bountiful out front is to thrust your hips forward and then round the shoulders in, creating this S-shaped body. We want to try to avoid this um, going into that third trimester, so uh, it makes the postpartum recovery a little bit faster and more successful, okay? So mountain pose, chin parallel to the floor, shining up through the crown of your head. You can put a big smile on your face if you want to. Big, beautiful, bountiful breaths through your belly, nourishing baby. Yeah, good job, okay. From here, raise your arms up, coming into eagle arms. So we're gonna raise the arms up, high up over the chest, and then cross over the left, over the right, at the elbow joint if you can, okay? And then wind, 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 seeing if you can bring palm to palm, or if that doesn't work, you can bring back of the hand to back of the hand, or if you don't, don't like that, you can just grab some sort of finger bind here, whatever. And if eagle arms just isn't your thing, just come into a big bear hug and just walk your fingers behind you. Yeah, so whichever version you want to do, eagle arms. Okay, good. Plant all four corners of your feet down. Remember, you haven't lost those nice, strong mountain legs. And then we're gonna sit back into a chair. Oh my goodness, sit back into your chair. So blossom your bum behind you, sitting back into your chair. If the weight has changed, redistribute it evenly in your feet. And then from here, lift your fingers up towards the sky. And there you activate your core. Mm, giving you that length through your spine. Imagine like you're sitting up in a real chair, straightening your back as much as you can while still blossoming your bum. Good, keep breathing, nice strong juicy pose. Remember we're building that strong foundation in preparation for your birth, so good. And then inhale up and release. Good, 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 good. Okay, same thing, opposite side, you ready? So arms come up higher than the chest. We're gonna cross over the right at the elbow and then wind, wind, wind. Finding your version of eagle arms or bear hug if you want to, okay? Okay, scoot your bum back, coming into your chair now. Redistribute the weight in your feet nice and evenly and then lift your hands up to the sky. 
Feel that fire right away start to swell in your foundation. Remember that foundation we want strong because we want you moving a lot during your birth. So you need strong foundation, strength in your foundation, stamina as well. So encourage your breath to move to where you're feeling resistance. See this as a good thing, as a powerful thing, as fuel, this beautiful fire. Yeah. And then on your next inhale, come back up, unwind those arms and give the shoulders a little roll out. Nice job. Okay. So coming to the top of your mat, if you're not already there, find that mountain pose. And notice if it's a big departure, once you got all your cues in, if it's a big departure from where you normally stand. Just notice. Good, got it? Let's take three big out breaths together here. So as we inhale, we're gonna swell into the belly. And then as we exhale, we're gonna force the air out like a waterfall. Okay, let's do three together. Inhale deep. Keep going as long as you can. Inhale deep. Last one. Good job. Okay, showing you from the side version here, from your mountain at the top of your mat, Take your hands to your hips, and we're gonna take a giant step back with the right leg, but before you do, when you take the step back, try and keep your feet on train tracks, not on a tight rope, okay? So when you're ready, big step back with the right leg, feet on train tracks, so separate the distance between them. All right, good. If it feels comfortable for you, I'm gonna get you to flip up that back heel and come into this lunge, this crescent lunge. So the heel is stacked right over top of the toe mound. Check in, does that feel okay? And if it doesn't, no problem. Just find your warrior one legs and lower down that back heel with the back toe facing forward. Okay, so whichever version you want to do, the front knee is gonna be stacked right over top of the heel. And it doesn't matter how deep we come. What matters most importantly is that we are hugging the legs towards the center line. So engage your bones and imagine a magnet drawing the legs towards the center. And there you activate your core, which is the only strong tummy muscle we want to activate, to challenge, to strengthen during our pregnancy. Okay, the core, transversus abdominis. If you feel comfortable, you can take your hands off your hips and raise them up overhead. Jasper's found a buddy outside. Hey, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jasper's doing yoga too. Good. Reaching up tall. We're going to find a gentle twist now towards the left. Starting to twist. Keep the connection in between your legs. Yeah. Beautiful. On your next inhale, come right back up through center. And then take your hands to your hips. And then we're gonna pivot on the heels, facing the side of the mat. Good. All right, put a nice band in your knees with your knees and toes going in the same direction. This is really important. You wanna make sure that the knees aren't tracking too far over the toes here and they're going in the same direction. All right, nice gentle squat, hug the legs towards the center line. Good. And then we're just gonna to start to move from side to side. Yeah. Just straightening one leg and then the other. You can use your heels of your hands in your thighs for support here. You got that? You kind of feel that rhythm? Now continue doing this if this feels good or we're gonna raise the hands up and do a side sweep as we go from side to side, back down through center. Kind of like we're holding a giant beach ball from side to side. You got it, keep going, moving with your breath. Slow movement, we're in no rush. We're in rush, every other part of our life is rush, 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 go, go, go. Don't rush this, don't rush your beautiful movement. Allow your breath to be your guide here. That fire is building in your foundation, that's on purpose. I'm with you, I feel it too. One more towards the right and 
that will complete our flow for this side. You can bring your hands to your legs and stand up. Okay, pivot your front foot forward and then pivot your back foot forward. We're not gonna step up just yet. So now both feet are facing towards the front of your mat, okay? Belly, body is facing towards the front of your mat. Hands on your hips, inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, start to spill forward. So as you start to spill forward, I want you to think about drawing your left hip crease back and your right hip crease forward. Now we don't need to come very far. Keeping your head up above your heart if you're feeling that nauseousness or indigestion, heartburn start to flare up. You don't need to come very far to start to feel it, that's for sure, especially if you're drawing the left hip crease back and the right hip crease forward. If you want to, and if your practice takes you a bit deeper, making sure your front knee is soft, not locked, you can start to make your way down a little bit further into your pyramid pose. Letting your head hang, if you can. Remember my cues are suggestions, so you do what feels good for you. Right now, right here, in this moment. One more breath where you're at. <sighs> Beautiful, with soft knees, slowly raise back up. Okay, we're gonna hop the back foot forward now and give it a little shake shake, a little Shakira shake at the top. Okay, finding your mountain once again, doing your three big out breaths. Of different kinds of out breaths we explore in class so that was the sigh okay studying your breath and then showing you from the side angle once again take your hands to your hips take a big giant step back with your left leg making sure your feet are on train tracks as you do that if you're on a tightrope it makes this uh, crescent lunge very difficult <laughs> okay if you can flip up that back heel stack the heel right over top of the toe mount yeah, otherwise you can just find your warrior one position with the back toe facing to the top left-hand corner of your mat. So whichever version you wanna do, stack your front knee right over top of your heel and most important cue in any lunge pose, I don't even have to say it anymore, right? You know, engage your legs towards the center line. Yeah, okay, arms come up overhead if you want or just keep them, you can keep them on your hips too. Remember, remember, my cues are suggestions. You do you right now. What feels good? <sighs> feels good for me to breathe, so I'm doing nice big sighs, nice long out breaths. <sighs> On your next exhale, you're gonna find that gentle twist now towards the right this time. Keep the engagement in your thighs. If you felt your stuff like me start to fall there, <laughs> that's because I lost my engagement. So hold on to your center. Inhale, come right back up. Arms overhead, good. And then exhale, bring your hands to your hips. All right, straighten your front leg, pivot on your heels to face the side of your mat once again. All right, plie your toes out and then find that kind of like that ninja stretch. I don't think that's normally what it's called, but that's what I call it. Ninja stretch from side to side. Maybe exploring a little deeper this time. You can even put a gentle rotation in your torso. Are you still breathing? Remember those out breaths? They help you to get a little extra release if you're feeling you need it. Okay, so continue doing this if it feels good or finding that big giant beach ball. As you inhale, up to one side, and then as you exhale, down through center, and then over to the opposite side. All right, no wrong way to do this. Just move in a way that feels beautiful for you. Encouraging that intuition to flow that beautiful goddess, that all-knowing being within you to come forth, because we want her present during your birth. Yeah. One more to either side, finishing up on the right. 
don't follow me, follow your breath. My rate of breath is going to be different than yours. Good, okay, straightening your legs. And we're gonna come into that pyramid stretch now. So pivot both feet forward on your mat. And then with a nice soft front knee, Inhale, lift and lengthen your spine, and exhale, start to spill forward. So here we're gonna draw the right hip crease back this time, left hip crease forward. And right away, you don't have to come all the way to truly, truly feel it. So we're leveling off the pelvis here, which might look funny on me with my mic. <laughs> so right hip crease back though, left hip crease forward. Okay, and if your practice takes you a bit deeper, honor where you're at though, of course, you can come a little bit deeper, 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 letting your head hang if you want to. Just making sure you're keeping that nice neutral back, drawing the right hip crease back and left hip crease forward. One more big nourishing breath here. And with soft knees, slowly ascend up, hopping the back foot up to meet at the front and give it a shake. Take a stroll to the back of your mat, and we're gonna do our little genie squat to get down. So we always squat to get down on the floor. We always squat to get up using both sides of your body, trying to avoid the lunge to rise, especially as you move into the more bountiful stages of the third trimester. Okay, so just a genie squat down, because it's kind of fun. And then we're going to sweep the feet around and come to sit on our bums. Oh, that feels good. Big stretch. Okay, coming into staff pose here. Pull the flesh out of the way of your sits bones, sitting up as high as you can in this 90 degree angle. Yeah, we're gonna bend into the right knee and place it over top of the left. So we're just like drawing the leg across the left and placing the right knee. See if you can get them stacking. You might not get them stacking today or ever, and <laughs> that's okay. We're just drawing the right leg across the bottom one as much as possible. That's all. And then just lower it there. Okay, so checking in. If you want, you can support yourself behind you, tenting your fingers. Does this feel good? Am I feeling a big juicy stretch in through my hip? You can push forward slightly if you want to get more of a hamstring stretch. Checking in. Or if you do want to juicify this stretch, bending into that bottom knee and making sure both ankles are flexed, really charged, so you don't create this weird shape in your foot. And then here you create this cow's head, this steer's head. Okay, so this is a big hip opener. So make sure any of those trigger spots that you tend to cling to stress, making sure they're let go, making sure they're soft. Yeah, and of course, if you want to tent your fingers behind you to help give you that lift and lengthen out through the crown of your head. One more big breath. Okay, if you're in full cow's head, feel free to keep your feet exactly where they are. And we're just gonna start to spin ourselves towards the left, walking our hands behind. Keep your feet where they are. Spin, 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 until now the left leg is on top. Kind of fun. And if that was really weird and you're all pretzled and discombobulated, <laughs> just flip your legs, no problem. Left leg comes on top this time. Make sure both feet are flexed. If your bottom leg was extended the first time, keep it extended on this round as well. Fingers tented behind you. Find that sweet spot that feels good for you right now. Okay, settle in. Shine up through the crown of your head. Finding that length. One more breath. Mmm, beautiful. All right, slowly unwinding that pretzel and find that big windshield wiper with your knees. Massaging in your bum. Good, okay. So we're gonna prepare for Shavasana now. So I want you to pull in your props, 
Or, I mean, if you're at home, go move to a couch, a bed, or a comfortable position, that place where you can get really, really comfortable, uh, where you can spend the next five minutes or so without the need to adjust or move too much. If you wanna set yourself up on your mat, uh, one of my favorite positions to do is just this semi-incline. So you can put a stack of books or container, whatever you have here, underneath your pillow. And then making sure you don't use your six pack to get down, doing this reverse sit up as you will, you could exacerbate something called diastasis recti. And if you want more uh, to learn more about that, you can see other videos on our channel, but um, making sure rather you roll onto your side and use your arms to make your way down onto your prop. And then from there, rolling onto whatever position feels good for you. So if you wanna lay on your back, lay on your back. That feels good. Lay on your side. You can stay here on your side. You can bring one arm on either side of the bolster and come down. That feels really nice as well. Or simply just use your bolster or pillow under your head, in between your knees. You know what's best for you. So I'm gonna get you to find that position now and I'm gonna stay seated. And once you've settled in, get grounded, get heavy, melt. And close your eyes and bring attention back to your anchor, back to your breath. As we move into Shavasana, always doing so with compassion for yourself without any expectation of what you should or shouldn't be feeling or doing here. And really moving into it with an open mind, allowing all thoughts of negativity and positivity to enter in. Mm. So staying focused inward, anchoring in with your breath. I want you to take yourself to a safe place. And if you've never explored this type of visualization before, this safe place, then think about what that place is for you. If you know right away, you can take yourself there. So this place can be completely made up or somewhere that exists on this land, like in your bed, big cozy bed. Or you could just simply be floating in space if that's a safe place for you, floating on the ocean, sitting on the top of a rainbow, whatever it is. So take yourself there. We're gonna explore the details of this place, using our senses, starting with the sense of sight, in your mind's eye, looking around this safe place, this place that brings you complete peace and joy and security and comfort, looking around you taking in all the colors, taking in all your surroundings, all the details that surround you. Noticing if you are alone or if there are other people around or animals. If so, what or who are they? Looking high, looking low. And then using your sense of smell, what scents might be around you that bring you comfort and joy? Is it floral? Is it musky? Is it a scent from nature? A scent from your childhood? Is it sweet? Is it savory? Let that scent wrap you up here in this safe place. 
Reaching out in front of you now, what can you touch around you using your sense of touch? Or what might be touching you, such as blankets or clothing? And explore that now and really see it in your mind's eye. What do you hear around you? Are there animals, nature, or is it just complete and utter silence? What speaks to you? What makes you feel safe, secure? And lastly, perhaps you can explore a sense of taste on your tongue. Something that gives you joy, happiness, an overall sense of well-being. Stay here in this place, in this space for as long as you want. It is always there waiting for you whenever you need it. Your safe place. Take three more slow, nourishing breaths. already on your side, rolling there now. And with your strong arms, slowly ragdoll up and up and up into your tall seat. Thank you for sharing this practice and your time with me today. The light in me honors and bows to the light in you and the little light inside of you. Namaste.